All right, let's talk about some skis. Who's Glenn Plague? That's a complicated, loaded question. I've, um, I'm a very complex individual. <laughs> I mean, by definition, I'm a professional athlete. Uh, specializing in snow skiing and other alpine activities. My skiing life started when I was two years old. I knew early on that I wanted to do something in skiing. That was my destiny, there's no doubt about it. I don't know how it was going to become, but it, it, it did. It manifested itself slowly but surely. Um, I became sponsored. And uh, uh, along a course of my sponsorship, I got involved with the company Elan. I've been with Elan now for 15 years, even though I did in fact ski on Elan's when I was younger as a junior competitor. Um, everybody wanted Elan's and I was uh, one, of those, one of those people that wanted Elan's. <laughs> um, I, I, I take everything that I do close to heart and I'll tell you right now, I'm sitting in my favorite place at the Elan factory and that is the wood core room. And you can see I'm surrounded by a bunch of natural, beautiful wood cores that will become skis someday. <laughs> so I, I like being where I'm sitting right now. My most recent project with Elan is to design the new backcountry ski, the new touring ski. Uh, that's becoming popular now. <laughs> but it, because of its popularity, uh, the, the, the needs of the ski tour uh, were changing. So it's been a, it was a wonderful project to be a part of. One thing that was very unique about this process of designing a new backcountry ski was that it was going to be a signature model for me. We wanted a ski that was a ripstick. We all love our ripsticks, but can we make it way less? Can we um, you know, give it characteristics that are what we want in ski touring? And, uh, and that's where the ripstick tour came around. I think when people become ski tours in today's world, they're less concerned about hut to hut to hut to hut. They want to go to a hut, stay two or three nights, and ski the slopes that you'd normally ski by looking at going, wouldn't that be cool to ski down? <laughs> and so I think ski touring is, I know ski touring is changing, which is why we need Ripstick Tour. It doesn't need to be the biggest, baddest, hardest day I've, I've had on the hills. I need it to actually ski easy. Um, we're ski touring all day. I'm tired. I've got a big backpack on. The top of the mountain was this beautiful, you know, soft snow. The middle of the mountain had been hit by wind. The bottom of the mountain was all refrozen crud and was actually terrible to ski. So I just explained I needed a ski that can do everything and do everything easily and more importantly, make it feel like it was, it was easy for me. Product design meetings were strange for this project because the pandemic, we couldn't go talk to each other. So, you know, you had the, the Zoom meeting, which was really funny because I don't have high speed internet. And um, so my Zoom meeting ended real quick from the standpoint of, all right, hey, it's Glenn, turn your camera off so I don't just see pixelated pictures and weird things taking place. Let's just talk here. So it was more like talking on the phone, to be honest. <laughs> um, and uh, so that took place and we got a, a lot of, of headway moving forward and then ultimately um, travel became possible. So I, I took a couple of essential trips to the factory and, um, and I was able to you know, speak face to face, hand to hand and, uh, and touch things because you know, I got black fingernails because I work with my hands, you know. <laughs> The technologies that we're using in the Ripstick Tour, we call the bridge technology, which is in fact a carbon fiber rod that is integrated into the core. And its main characteristic is for absorption control. Uh, we've been playing a lot with that with our other Ripsticks and we're finding great success with three dimensional carbon um, 
rods and tubes in, in the other ripsticks. And so we've incorporated that into the ripstick tour. We use what we call 360 sidewall, and that's trapezoidal sidewalls. We were able to remove a whole bunch of material on the sides of the ski that we don't necessarily need. And when we're, you know, when we're trying to get rid of weight, that was one place where we were able to get rid of some mass, um, which ultimately turned into weight. Um, and then, uh, like every other ripstick, we use amphibio technology. So um, when that snow is hard at the end of the day and, and things have maybe refrozen in the springtime, you still have that wonderful you know, edge hold and, and inside edge of amphibio. But when it's uh, light and dry and, and or wet and sloppy because it's spring, um, you have uh, the big, uh, you know, the big uh, early rise outside edges of a ripstick. <laughs> so you make a ski, you do all your stuff, and then you go, okay, what's it going to look like? And this, to me, was, was really a fun part because a lot of times skis have to fit this little niche or they got to fit in between these, you know, parameters. They let me kind of have whatever I wanted. And, and so uh, we talked about, okay, it's a ski touring ski. So we want crazy colors. And you might think, oh, it's 80s, it's 90s, you know, it's your, no, it's not the case at all. It's beautiful sunsets, it's rose gardens. It's, um, it's uh, you know, it's inspiring things. When you're, uh, when you're on expedition, it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's dark sometimes and you just want to like get and surround yourself in color. Uh, and I asked for some stupid things and they gave them to me. Um, the ski bases, I was like, well, if these are amphibio and there's a right and a left ski, then why do the both bases have to be the same color? <laughs> so I didn't, I really, I didn't think I was going to get that one. And, the, and sure enough, when the prototype showed up, there it was, two different base colors. So that's going to be pretty cool. I look forward to putting them in some powder and showing them up to everybody. And, and then uh, also, Ilan has a very rich heritage of design, a rich heritage of racing, a rich heritage of, of being a ski company. And yet at the same time, we, we tend to throw away some of our old ideas, some of our older icons. And I, I, I cherish that. I'm a bit of a collector uh, you know, in, my, in my own life. And I've always loved the integration of the ease. Uh, we wanted to put structure on the ski. And I was like, can we do something cool with the Elan logo, like the old one? And maybe we can do something. And I got to work with the designers. And, and the next thing you know, we created this kind of you know, texture. And it's really, the, it's, a, and it's, it's, it's an Elan logo from 40 years ago, more. And so I'm, I'm really, I'm personally, that's my favorite part about the ski, <laughs> is to see that old logo, it's cool. If there's a ski out there that's got my name on it, I better be happy with the end result, or I wouldn't have allowed, I wouldn't have signed off on it. So yes, I'm really excited about the result. And you know what's going to be weirder is seeing people out on it. You know, I mean, that that's reality for me to be skiing along someday and see somebody skiing on my skis. That's when reality's going to hit. Heck yeah, I'll show you some skis. Let me just finish them up here. All right, now they're ready. <laughs> All right, let's go get some clips on these things and head to the hills. Yoo! <laughs>